Hi, thanks for joining us online today and welcome to Fashion. You're about to hear a message from our Unearthed Women study. In this study, we've been learning how God has things in all of us that He wants us to discover. So grab your Bible, your notes, and prepare your hearts for a word from God. Go with me to Esther chapter 4 and verse 15. Esther chapter 4 and verse 15. I will give you a second to get to that. We are in week 4. Come on, we have... Eight, yeah, eight weeks left. Thank God Randy can do some math. Eight weeks left. (laughs) I was like, one, two, three, four, five, six, (laughs) eight weeks left. So Esther chapter four and verse 15 says, Esther sent back her answer to Mordecai. Go and get all the Jews living in Susa together. Fast for me. Don't eat or drink for three days. Hangry, okay. Don't eat or drink for three days, either day or night. I and my maid will fast with you. I will, if you do this, if you will do this, I will go to the king even though it's forbidden. If I die, I die. Jesus. Let's just read that. If I die, I die. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this week. God, we thank you for all you're doing, all you're going to do in these next few moments. God, we just ask that you would open our ears. Father, that we would hear what you're saying. You would open our hearts to receive, Father, the shift and the change you're going to do in our hearts today. So we just lay it down, God. We ask that these words would be your words from your throne room, that they would penetrate our hearts and we would never, ever, ever be the same. So we thank you. In your mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. So today I get to speak to you about Esther. Yeah, she's awesome, right? She went through a few different things. It's, it's really about unearthing truths today. Unearthing truths is a real topic. You know, we don't like to face it, but we have to. And Esther is this woman you may or may not know. She was on a journey in her life. She was orphaned at a very, very young age, and someone stepped in and journeyed with her. She made her way all the way to becoming a queen. Amen. Anybody want to be a queen? Y'all are queens. Okay, I'm a queen. Thank you. Yes, amen. So she made her way to becoming a queen. She really, along the journey, though, had to uproot some things and take off some cover-ups and, and, and stop be hiding behind the identity that, that, sh- that God had created her to be. You know, she went into this kingdom. She went into this palace hiding who her true ethnicity was or what her true race was. And when the real pressure came, it was time to unearth the truth. It was time to face who she was, who God created her to be, and what her mission was along the entire way. And so for me, 2016, you can talk to Pastor Lissette after, I have no problem with you asking her, was the year of unearthing truth. And I just want to be very transparent in these next 20 minutes and talk about how it doesn't matter who you are, where you stand, what your position are, whether you're a mom, you're a thea, you're a grandma, you're a pastor, you're a leader, we all have truths to unearth. You know, and there's a few questions that I asked myself throughout the year as I was unearthing that I think we, we can challenge ourselves and ask ourselves as well. First thing I want to ask you is, what is coming off of me? You know, in Esther chapter 2 and verse 12, it says, each woman's turn came to go into King Xerxes after she had completed 12 months, okay? After she completed the 12 months of preparation, according to the regulations for the women. So just stop real quick. She got to enjoy the kingdom after she completed the preparation. Hang on to that. Are you ready? You ready? Okay. After she completed the preparation according to the regulations for the women. For thus were the days of preparation anointed. Six months with oil of myrrh, oil and myrrh, and six months with perfumes and preparations. So she went through basically 12 months of beautifying herself and all these other women that were kind of going in line with her trying to get to this crown. So anybody like makeup? Oh, I, y'all, y'all ain't lied to me. I see your face. I see your highlights from here. Okay, do you like makeup? We're going to talk to each other. This is going to be a conversation. Okay? Yeah. So I like makeup. I love makeup, actually. I, I actually do hair and makeup for a living. That's how much I love it. So every time Pastor Billy's like, why do you need that? I'm like, it's my job. <laughs> Try me again. Give me another one, Pastor Billy, you know? So I'm like, I do makeup, you know? I like makeup. So I, there's always new things coming out. It's so hard to keep up. It's really expensive, you know? Bless Pastor Billy's heart, but it's not cheap, okay? But I enjoy doing makeup. I enjoy enhancing, you know, the beauty of other women, enhancing, you know, 
the features that we have, whether eyebrows or not. Thank you, Lord, for a pencil because your girl is sparse. So I, I love it. We enhance things. We add things. We sometimes cover things, you know. And in this beautification, I mean, I'll, I'll take 12 months of, yeah, you going to pamper me? <laughs> go right ahead. I will go to the spa every day for 365 days. But the funny thing is the first six months of this beautification had no makeup. Um, what do you mean? <laughs> That's what this is about, you know? The first six months, like I said, the scripture says it was oil and myrrh. So oil is a picture kind of of the Holy Spirit. So when we think about, you know, oil removing things, anybody worn waterproof mascara? Anybody decided to never wear it again after wearing it one time? Thank you, okay? So this oil, it's almost like you know, the first six months, it was really coming in from where she was and what had happened and everything that she had built up along those, all these years that she had been alive, the first six months was just removing that, quite honestly. You know, there wasn't, you know, we didn't have showers with the rainforest drops. We didn't have manicures and pedicures and facials and, and razors, to be honest, nail clippers. We didn't have all of that, okay? So the first six months was just literally removing everything that she had carried with her along the way. Yeah, that, that's kind of crazy. Because, you know, you think, well, okay, well, I'll come in, Jesus. You know, you can have a few weeks. I'll go to church. I'll go to the study. I'll join a small group. And then, and then I want my husband, and I want that job, and I, I, I just want my promotion right now. And God is like, hold on. If, if oil is a picture of the Holy Spirit, the question is, have we invited the Holy Spirit in to remove the buildup, to take off the things that we've had, you know, to just get rid of those things that we carry with us for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. You know, it's really about removing that. Oil, also, anybody ever had a, a massage? Yes, praise God. Deep tissue? No, thank you. Okay. Oil is really used for kneading and removing knots. You know, knots are build up. You, didn't, you don't have all those knots when you go see the masseuse from like, oh, you went to work out one time. No, girl, you've been doing this for a long time. You know, we really have to ask, Holy Spirit, come, remove the junk, remove the gunk, get rid of it, knead it out. It's going to be painful. It's going to hurt. But guess what? Then you get to have the next thing, the next six months. It's the enhancements. It's the ointment. It's the coal, henna. So coal would have been like the winged liner, the locket, locket Kat Von D, you know, little whatever it is, that, you know, it would be the winged liner, the henna, you guys all know what henna is, everybody's wearing it all over their arms, their face, all that stuff like that, but it's the enhancements, you know, I have an aunt who is an esthetician, and she has a beautiful salon, and oh, oh, far away, I don't get to see it all the time, but she talks about it, so I believe her, and um, I'm always telling her, I want this, I want that, you have to get me this, you have the hookup with that, and she's like, girl, slow down on the foundation, slow down on the concealer, what does your skin look like? What, you know, what does your skin look like? What does your foundation look like? The base of what you're adding all of this to. Sometimes we're like, okay, no oil, no myrrh, no, no, next, next. I'll take, I'll take the concealer. I'll take the color corrector. But, but no, Holy Spirit, don't. No, nope, I'm good. I'll, I'll keep the foundation I have. I just know how to cover it up. Okay, when it's time to unearth truths, it's about getting the cover up off, taking the, getting the oil, Holy Spirit, come remove all my cover ups off, so that I can confront this. We, can ne- we, we can't cover, we can't ask for love to cover us until we confront what's underneath it. A lot of times we say, okay, come cover, but we can't cover what we don't confront. Everybody say, we can't cover what we don't confront. You know, it just makes me think, there have been so many times where, you know, a f- that all of the first, literally, it's crazy when I read this because I was like, literally the first six months that I really worked on unearthing things, you can ask, Pastor said again, verify all of this. I dare you. It's true. Okay. You know, the first six months were literally me saying like, no, I'm good. No, I'm good. No, it's all good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I I would just, I would dance around little topics. It's like someone asks you a hard, you're like, yeah, work is hard. That's not the real issue. You know, oh, I'm kind of having a few little arguments with my husband. That's not the real issue. Oh, me and my boyfriend, you know, we're just this, that's not the real issue. There's, there's a root to that. And a lot of times we go to the enhancements and we look for the fruit and forget about the root. You know, we're confused why our fruit is all funky tasting and bruised up the second it comes out of its plant. 
because the root hasn't been taken care of. Say, don't forget the root. Say it with me. Don't forget the root before the fruit. Okay, again, don't forget the root before the fruit. You know, a lot of us, we just skip that, and then when we grab the fruit and we taste it, you're like, uh, this, this don't taste good. What's going on? And it's because we haven't purified the soil. We haven't gone through and said, I'm going to uncover, I'm going to dig. You know, anybody ever had a white manicure? Anybody? It don't last white for long. So when it's time to dig, you're like, uh, do you have something else? Is there another way to get down there? But it's time to grab your shovel, dig it out. God, take it out. So when I start to plant things, they're not, they're not going to be stale in the fruit because I'm taking care of the root. You know, digging, we don't like doing it alone. I don't like doing it alone. 2016, I could not have done that thing alone, okay? Never. Never would I try. Never would I attempt. So the next thing I want to ask you is who's standing with you? Who's digging with you? Who's along this journey with you? Esther, she had this man named Mordecai. You know, he, he was of the same ethnicity of her. He had known her for a very long time. And she, she didn't have to do this alone. You know, when it's time to uncover things, the first time that I was like, okay, I'm ready to do this, I'll tell you. And I told her everything I had felt, everything I had thought, my insecurities, my doubts, my fears, um, my genuine emotions, you know, I didn't feel like, I'm free. No, girl. It was like, okay, I'm naked. Um, don't look at me. It was scary, you know, and a lot of times we think, just spill it all out and you're going to be good. You'll be free. No, you might be free of, of lies and fear, but will you stay free? Will there be someone with you along the way to keep you free? Esther 2, 7, let me just introduce to you the heart of Mordecai, not just who he was and what he did in the kingdom, but what his heart was. It says, and Mordecai had brought up Hadassah, who is Esther, that was her Jewish name, that this, um, Hadassah, that is Hester, Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. The young woman was lovely and beautiful. When her father and mother died, Mordecai took her as his own daughter. Okay, let's read that. Mordecai took her as his own daughter. Ready? Mordecai took her as his own daughter. You know, this was the heart of Mordecai. Doesn't matter what our situations have labeled us. Doesn't matter what, you know, you've gone through in the past 10, 15, 6, 5 seconds. I don't really care what it is. We can't let our situations label us. We have to find someone like Mordecai that's going to say, the identity of you is actually a daughter. You're not an orphan. You know, when, when, we, when we feel an orphan spirit, it doesn't really have to necessarily be parents. It can be, it's just a sense of abandonment. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I have felt abandoned before. Yeah, it's very real, okay? I don't know, for you women in this room, I don't know if it was your husband that abandoned you. I don't know if it was your boyfriend that abandoned you, your parents, your sisters, your best friends, but we've all dealt with abandonment if we can be very real, okay? A few years ago, um, my parents actually had both left the church. I thank God every, every Sunday that I walk in and my mom is here because God has done full circle in her life. So, mama, we're proud of you, okay? <laughs> um, but there was a season where neither of my parents were here and they left and there was a lot of stuff going on in our lives and I felt abandonment. If I can be completely honest, I was terrified. I was confused. Do I leave with them? If I stay, is it against, am I, am I betraying them? But if I leave, am I betraying this? Am I, am, do I, how, how do I stay? What will my family look at me like? What will my pastors look at me like? Like, are you faking it? Are you, and all of these insecure thoughts came in. And I just said, okay, well, here's this label. I'm an orphan. I'm good. I'll just, I'll just take what it gives me. And these are the words I despise, okay? It is what it is. No, I'm being very serious. It, it is not what it is. It is what God says it is. It's what he calls you to be. It's how he decides to heal you. It's how he removes the truth. It is not what it is. You know, we say that, and that's just like you saying, okay, devil, what else you got for me? Because I'll just take whatever you make my situation look like. No, no. We, you are not an orphan. You are not a bandit. You are not alone. You are not fearful. You are not doubtful. You are not insecure. You are a daughter, and you will rise up and call him blessed. 
Okay. My, my Mordecai, if I, we cannot do this without a Mordecai. We cannot do this without someone standing with us. I don't care how long we've been in it. I don't care how long, you know, we've, 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 we've accepted who we are. I, I do not, that is not the stopping point. That is not the limit to what Jesus has. Proverbs 1, size, 1 5 says, A wise man will hear and increase in learning. A man of understanding will attain wise counsel. I will not just have a Mordecai for five days or six months or a year. I will attain someone that will challenge me, that will call me a daughter, and that will say, I am who I am. You know, the message translation says, there's something also for the seasoned men and women. A lot of us cancel ourselves out of having a Mordecai because guess what? We're seasoned. I'm good. I've been married for... Not me, but I'm just saying. I've only been married three years. I've been married 30 years. I've accepted what my marriage is. Or, you know, I've been in this ministry thing for four, 20, 10, 15 years. I'm, I, I know who I am. I'm good. No, there's something for the seasoned. You know, the second you disqualify yourself from someone walking with you is the second that you decide, I don't want fruit. I'm okay with the root staying the way it is. I'm okay with how it looks. I'm cool with that. We come every week, literally every week. You will be here the next eight weeks, and we have women sitting around the table at, with us. Are we willing to step out and say, will you be my Mordecai? Or are we just going to come in and come out every week and just say, you know, these are just the women I sit with. We answer a few questions, and we leave. No. You have a table, Captain, for a reason. We prayed each and every one of you in. Not one of you are here by accident. Not one of you ended up here at a table by coincidence or you just sat there because there was an extra seat. That is the ordination of Christ. Okay? This is, this, it's, it's time for us as women to stand up and say, I will face the unearthing of truths. I will grab my Mordecai. I will start to remove the things. I will ask the Holy Spirit to come upon me and have his way because he sends people. At, Mordecai was sent he, and, and just like Pastor Lisette was sent into my life, I was able to start saying, I'm going to unearth this. I'm not going to be alone. Even when I feel vulnerable, guess what? She's my covering. You know, you're not, you're not there by yourself. When, when it came time for Esther to say, okay, you know, for a long time she hid that she wasn't Jewish. Long, long, long time she was in there. And she said, I don't want anybody to know. Don't know we're good. I, I can keep driving even though my gears are grinding and I'm running out of gas, I'm just going to keep going like some of us. We're at the very end and we're like, I'm just going to get there even if I'm on one wheel when there's people there along the way to help us. You know, Esther hid it. But when she finally said, you know what? This is who I am. And if I die, I die, but I will die in truth. And Jesus is truth. So if she were to perish, guess what she would have perished into? Jesus. Because she stood in truth. She stood in who she was. And Mordecai was able to come and say, you can do this. You, you, you got this. You know, sometimes we just need somebody to say, you got this. You can do this. You can go home and have a conversation with your kid and put your foot down. You can go and speak to your husband and say, we will attend services. We will have a godly marriage. We will do this the way that God wants us to do it. You know, we can do this. You know, there's times where I would ask Pastor Seth, why, why do I have to do this? I've gone 20 years just fine. This is uncomfortable. It's dirty. I'm cool with how I look. You know, I can just sing a few songs every week, come and go, and it never touch my heart because it's so hardened. It can never penetrate past it. But I'm good. Like, I'm fine. And, and that's why the, the next thing we have to really ask ourselves is why. Why am I doing this? You know, you start the process, and you're like, okay, these are a few things coming out. I found the person with me. And then you hit a roadblock. And this is the choice. Do I turn around and go back to Comfortableville? Or do I press on to the kingdom? Do I press on to the call? Do I press on to really what, he's, what, he, what he wants for me? So when we ask ourselves, why am I doing this? Plain, very simple. Are you ready? Are you ready for the answer? Are you ready? Okay. Because you can simple, right? So easy, huh? 
you're shocked with the answer. So was I. But that's what the Holy Spirit said. He said, you can. Because I empower you. Because I equip you. You can unearth truth because you're a daughter. You can unearth truth because you believe. You can unearth truth because you are passionate. You are zealous. You have a call. And because God has women waiting on the other side, ready to plant seeds into your soil, and until it's uprooted, those seeds are waiting. God is like, like pastor's message. Are you willing to bring him empty, clean, pure soil? Because his seeds are endless. His fruit is endless. As long as we can plow and make that, make that, make that, that ground ready. You know, sifting and pushing through and getting out. It's not easy. I'm not going to stand here and tell you it's easy. You know, how you felt when you had your back turned on you. How you felt when, when someone walked out on your life. How you felt when, you know, you lost your job. When you feel like you couldn't make it. When you weren't a good enough mom. When you didn't make the right decisions. All of those things. God is saying you can. I don't care what you've been labeled with. I don't care what you've brought on to yourself. You have been righteously made, fearfully, wonderfully. You know, sometimes we just need to be reminded, I can. Say it. I can. Why do I do it? Why do I do it? Come on. Why do I do it? You know, this, this, this ending scripture as I close is Esther 4 and verse 14. It says, this is the moment for which you have been created. This right here. Nothing else. Before you are mom, before you are wife, before you are sister and leader and manager and boss, you are daughter. Okay? 2016 for me was me saying, I'm daughter. And that is enough. Everything else, like Matthew 6 says, will be added. But until we can say, I am a daughter, and that is enough, I don't care how young you are, how old you are. You will always be a daughter. You ever heard your mom say that? I don't care how far you go. You're going to be my daughter. I will tell you you can't wear that. Thank you, mom. You know, you can't wear that. I don't care if you're 25 years old. You ain't going to wear that out the house. Because before everything else and after everything else, we will be a daughter. We will be equipped. You know, Pastor Lisette and the team of, of, of the women's ministry they want to equip you. This is what this is for. This entire thing, every Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, it's for you to be equipped. You know, we have an artillery of shovels and of sifters and of hands ready to start digging. But are you ready to say, this is the moment? This is the time. There's no time like today. The Bible says tomorrow is not promised. So what will you do with a day God has given you? Do you believe that? This is it. This is who I was created to be. This is who I will always be. I will always be a daughter. And anything that comes in the way will be removed. You know, there's a small little piece of paper that the table captains have on their ta tables. It's a little square. You guys can all reach for it. It has a, a scripture we just read. And we're going to say it to ourselves, okay? Because it's different when we hear people tell us, you know, you can do this. But when you tell yourself, I can do this. I am going to do this. I take control of this. I take reign and I say, enemy, you do not have access. So we're going to read this together. And you're going to tell yourself, this is the moment for which I have been created. Okay? Are you ready? Ready? One, two, three. This is the moment for which I have been created. One more time. This is the moment for which I have been created. You can do this. You can unearth. You can trust somebody again. Okay? I had to be reminded I can trust somebody again. There's times where, you know, a thought will come and I'm like, no, I can't talk about this. No, I can because I've been created for this moment. I can control this thought. I can decide that this insecure feeling is going to go away. 
I can decide that I won't let my mind relapse to where it used to be. You know, if you feel like in this moment you're ready to say, God, I want you to start unearthing some truths in my life. I'm ready to commit to you, whether it's the first time or the hundred thousandth time. It does not matter because His mercy and His grace is endless. So why don't we just bow our heads? You know, if you're ready to say, God, I commit this to you. My heart, my soul, my mind, my roots, and my fruits. If that's you, I just, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. Because you can do this. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. You can raise your hand if you feel like that's you. You ready to commit to this? You ready to say that that's me? Beautiful. Okay, we're going to pray. Everybody can repeat after me. Say, Dear Jesus. Say it again. Dear Jesus. I commit my life to you. Your word says, If I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, you will save. So I commit my life to you. I can say you're Lord of my life. You died and rose again for me. So I commit to you. Unearth the things that I'm fearful to unearth. Send me a Mordecai. Send me your Holy Spirit. And send me your affirmation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow, what an amazing message. Here at Fashion, we believe that God has the next step for all of us. If you made a decision to follow Jesus, you've just taken the greatest step. Click the link below and you'll be guided to what's next for your life. If you're a part of our family here at Destiny Church, we'd love to get you connected. Click the link in the description to take your next step. Be sure to tune in next week as our end of study continues at Fashion, where everyday girls love to live and live to love. <laughs>